Very good. good. All right. So Revelation chapter 14. And um, as we had stated, we are marching through. And um, we're on the second half of the book. And we are dealing now with this aspect of the devil having great wrath. Anybody remember why the devil has got great wrath? Why is he, why is he all upset? What happened? He got kicked out. Kicked out of where? Out of heaven. He got kicked out of heaven. You know, and we, we see that phrase that I think is such an a, a oxymoron of a statement where it says, and there was war in heaven. And oftentimes we think of heaven, we're thinking about what? Peace. Not, but uh, the Lord said, okay, there's one thing we got to do. We got to get rid of this, this adversary, the devil. That they call him the dragon. All right? And so... Uh, as we got uh, through that, we see that he came down, and once the devil was kicked out of heaven, and I also see that as his inability to not deal from a heavenly standpoint. And remember, heaven is a spiritual uh, 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 place. It's a spiritual and, and um, uh, interaction that you have. And so one of the, the things that the devil does is that one, after he is kicked out, his interaction becomes vastly more natural and he then begins to deal with the earth and the Bible says woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has come down to the earth having what great, great wrath. wrath because he knows his time is what short and he he immediately gets into and embodies the Bible calls this beast which we recognize as being the what the Antichrist we see that he goes out and he begins to do things and say all kinds of different blasphemy against God. And once again, he's, his whole philosophy is to turn this planet against God. Make this world believe God's unfair, God's not right, God is not, God's a bully, God is a tyrant, God, you know, he, that's his whole thing. The devil also gets into this other being called the what? The false prophet. And the false prophet helps to uh, solidify and to corroborate the things that the Antichrist is saying. And then they build this great big old statue, this, this, this uh, image of the beast and the Bible says that they were given authority and power. And I also make sure that we underline that aspect. The Bible says it was given to them to be able to do that. So God says, okay, I'm going to allow you to do your thing. You know, the old saying, you give them a little bit of rope and end up what, hanging themselves. Yeah. And so we see that this beast, these, the, the false prophet and the antichrist, and they create this image. And the Bible says they were able to give uh, uh, life to this image so that it both was able to speak. And it could, and, and it called down fire or, or caused fire to come down to, or, on all those that did not uphold the ways uh, of the antichrist. Now. Keep in mind that when we were looking in uh, chapter 12, remember we were talking about how the dragon was waiting for the child to be born and, uh, and, it had, and the woman that was given birth. And we, we said the woman was who? Israel. And Israel was given a protection if, and was put into a place of safety. A lot of people think that place of safety is, is Petra. It could be. I, I can't say that it is. But once again, the name of this book is what? Revelation. Where they need to be for God's protection will be what? Revealed to them when that time happens. But we're also keeping in mind that, that, that we got Israel being protected and got and helped by God. Right? We already seen the two witnesses. They came down and they testified. And what happened? They were what? allowed to be overtaken by the, the Antichrist and put to death, but then what happened? They also came back to life and were ascended back up into heaven. All right. We also have this other group called the 100 and what? 44,000. And they were what? Sealed by God. And then we also have from time to time angels flying around the heaven, flying around the earth proclaiming what? The everlasting gospel. So look at what's going on on this planet. I wonder how the stock market is going to be doing during that time. <laughs> you know, I wonder really, you know, all this stuff that's going to be going on and all these activities. And remember, we're seeing spiritual things happen because earlier on in the book of Revelations, we saw that the scripture told us that the, that the scroll of heaven was rolled back. So now 
things of spiritual things were more visible and more consistent. The Bible says we see through a glass what? Dark. Darkly. We know in part and testify in part. When that scrolls roll back, I think that the, the glass is probably still somewhat uh, not 100% clear, but I think it's cleaned up quite a bit where we can now see and interact in spiritual things. Why we see the heavens, uh, the angels going through the heavens, and why we see uh, these beings such as the two, anti the two, the two witnesses, the 144,000. And remember we saw these locusts that came out of the bottomless pit that, was, that were chained there and held there which has also been talked about by Peter and by, and by um, Jude, about these people, the, these beings that were held captive and then let loose in their proper time. Jesus even encountered a, 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 a sect of demons that were upset because when they saw Jesus coming, they said, are you come to, to torment us what, before our time? And so we see that there's all types of... Uh, situations where these demons and these fallen angels know that there is certain things that they have been given ability to do. And remember, that's an important thing to keep in mind because if you, one of the things that we can even see when the scroll is rolled back where we're able to peek and to see how this stuff works is the book of Job. Because remember, Satan wanted to get to Job all along. And God said, uh, have you considered them? He said, I have considered them, but I can't get to them because what? You got a hedge of protection. And God removed the hedge and let it happen. He gave him the ability to what? To go after Job. And so we see that even now that the uh, Antichrist and the false prophet are going and they're doing. But keep in mind, God is what? He's removing the hedge and letting them go. Letting them do things. God has not lost control. The, the Antichrist has not overpowered God. God has allowed these things to happen. And you say, well, can you explain to me why God would allow these things to happen? No, I can't. I just know that God knows. And that's why the Bible says, if we don't believe that God is who he is, and if we don't uh, uh, believe in him completely and have faith, if, if we don't have that faith in God, uh, we can't please him. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why is it impossible to please God without faith? Because there are things that God does that you will never understand. You just have to believe that he is who he say he is. Because if you're waiting to put God in a test tube and to find a formula as to why God does things, you're never going to know who God is. You're going to have to just believe him because his ways are what? Above our ways. So that's why the scripture says that if you don't believe in him and trust in him by faith, you will never be able to please God because you are not going to dissect all the reasons and the whys of God. It's not going to happen. Because if that can happen, if I can explain to you everything that God does, that makes me and God equal. Right. If I got God's mind, then and guess what? It ain't that. It ain't that and never will be. And not even close. Amen. We don't know all the things of God. We know what God has what? told us, what he has revealed to us, what he has given us insight on. Alright? So, with that as kind of, just kind of getting a grasp on where we are here, let's go ahead and, and, and dive right on into chapter 14. Let's take a listen. Chapter 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth 
and the sea, and the fountains of water. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. The angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. The winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. All right, chapter 14. There's some stuff happening here. Did you notice how many times you saw where it said, and another angel, mm -hmm. and another angel, and another angel? You cannot get this confused unless you want to. If you want to, you will not believe. If you uh, want to, you will be uh, uh, disallowed in understanding the things of God because you refuse to accept it. When you have, the, the scripture says, how can we neglect the salvation when we have so great a cloud of what? Witnesses. So we have so much uh, going for us, even today. People say, well, I don't think it's right. Uh, I didn't choose this. Why do I got to choose now? Adam cho chose this for me. Adam was the one that brought man into sin. Why do I need to be responsible? And they, they look at that from a standpoint of saying, I don't think it's fair. Well, let's think about that for a moment. Adam was given a, given a what? A choice. And his choice was what? You can choose to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and avoid that tree. And also in the garden was also what? The tree of what? The tree of life. And he could have eaten from the tree of life and lived eternally with the Lord in, in that perfect state, in that innocent state. But instead, he was given a choice, and, and him and Eve did what? They chose to eat from the knowledge of the and so, so they were given a choice. And now by, by that, we all are born what? In sin. Shaped in iniquity. Okay. And did we have a choice in that? No. Okay. But now that we're born... Do we have the same choice that Adam had? Yes. Yes, we do. And so why is that not fair? People that argue about it, I, I try to bring that through. I go, it's, it's just as fair. We got, we got the same thing that Adam had. We have a choice. We can choose to go with the knowledge of this world, which is what? Corruption and false. Mm -hmm. Or we can choose life. And the life comes through who? Jesus Christ. If you think about it, we've been given the exact same opportunity, the exact same choices. Choose life, or, death. or you could choose that. 
People a lot of times choose to have wisdom. They're trying to know God by wisdom. And you can't know God by wisdom. We just talked about that. In order to please God without faith, it is what? Impossible, Impossible. to please God. You got to have faith. But people want to know uh, the things that God knows. I want to put God in a test tube. I want to understand how did Jesus do the miracles. I want to learn how to do the miracles. You don't learn how to do miracles. You just know him. Because mm -hmm. if you know God, that's all you need. Because God knows how to do everything. Amen. And so we have to make sure that we recognize that we've been given the same opportunity. No one has been treated fair. I mean, unfair. Everyone has been given the, a, a fair opportunity to know God just like Adam did. All right. So I like to throw that out because a lot of times when you're talking to people and people want to say, well, you know, I shouldn't have to make this and it's not fair. And no, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You just got to think about it. But the, a lot of times the devil tries to blind the minds of uh, of people so that they will feel like a victim. Feel like, well, it ain't my fault. Feel like, well, I shouldn't have to do this. No. God has given you everything. And all you got to do is what? Choose. Acknowledge it. Accept it. What is the work of the Father? That you believe on him who he has sent. That's it. You believe on the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Amen. Right? And so it's important that we keep that in mind as we go through our walk. And it's not a whole lot of extra activity. You just believe in Jesus. Amen. Now, after you believe in Jesus, you can then begin to earn rewards. And people say, well, you're going to get rewards? Yes, you get rewards. Not, you don't get rewarded with salvation. Salvation is a what? Gift. Yeah. But after you get saved and receive salvation, you can then receive what? Rewards. Right? And so that's what we, we work for. People say, well, I don't think I should be working for rewards. I think I should just work for just working. Well, that ain't what Jesus said. Jesus said that if, that if you were to uh, uh, work, that you will receive a reward. You will receive a crown, of, a crown of, of life. Not so much the eternal life, but the crown that goes with life. You will receive... Um, uh, a variety of different things and, and, and uh, I don't know why I got on this but it's important that we recognize that there is a, a listing that I have I don't know if I have it with me of all the different rewards um, and gifts that we are to give and you know I think I do have it with me let me see if I can find it since I'm on this let me see if I can rewards yes so you receive a crown of life James 1 and 12, you receive a crown of incorruption, 1 Chronicles uh, 24, 1 Chronicles 9 and 24, a, a crown, a reward of, of rejoicing, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 19, a uh, reward of righteousness, 2 Timothy 4, uh, uh, 5 through 8, a reward of glory, 1 Peter 5 and uh, 2 through 4. And there are a bunch more. That's just a couple of them that I had written down in my, and on the back part of my Bible here because I was like, you know what, that's interesting to keep in mind. That, and those are additional to just having the reward of being with the Lord for what? Eternity. And did I name them all? No. That's just a few. That's just a few. All right, let's get into this. Chapter 14. And I look and look. Once again, who's talking here? John. He's been given the revelation by who? Jesus. By Jesus. All right, and this is the revelation of Jesus. All right. And I look, and lo, a lamb. All right, the lamb all uh, uh, throughout Scripture represents what? The sacrifice. Who was our ultimate sacrifice? Jesus. Jesus. I look, and a lamb stood in the Mount Zion. And with him, a hundred and forty-four thousand. Remember them? Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember God, and he sealed them. So now, they are now standing with the who? With the lamb. So their work on earth has what? Has finished. Now, when they, when they were initially called, the Bible told us in Revelation, it told us that God sealed one hundred and forty-four thousand, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And he sealed them. Now, now that they have done their work on earth, and they are now with the Lamb, how many did, did, did God lose? He didn't lose any, did he? No. 
How many? How many? He sealed one hundred and forty-four thousand. And how many are there with the Lord? One hundred and forty-four thousand. So that means the ones that God sealed, not a single what one was lost. Remember, Jesus gave that that that, 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 that parable about if 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 one lamb goes astray, what happens? You, he'll leave the the ninety-nine to go get the one. So that what? So that none are lost. The Lord ain't gonna lose anyone, any of us. We are sealed with the what? With the Holy Spirit. Is God gonna lose you? He going is he, he ain't gonna misplace you. He ain't gonna let you go astray either. If he sealed, if you are sealed, you are his. But see the question is, are you sealed? Are you sealed? That's the question. Because the scripture, Jesus also said, many will say unto me, Lord, have I not done, cast out demons, and done all these wonderful works in your name? And the Lord Jesus said, I will say unto them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. In other words, you were never sealed. You were in activity. You were doing things so-called in my what? In my name. But I never knew you. You were never sealed. There's a lot of people walking around here doing religious activity. Doing a lot of religious stuff. Amen. Call in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say. A lot of people are saying Lord, Lord. Saying Jesus, Jesus. Saying God, God. But they have not been sealed. When you are sealed, you are his. All right? And that's an important thing to keep in mind. You can be close to Jesus and still be lost. Look at Judas. Judas was right there with Jesus and was still a devil. Look at the Pharisees. The Pharisees were in the word, in the book of Moses. They were the religious leaders and Jesus called to, told them you are of your father who? The devil. Because if you are not gods then you belong to the evil one. See there's no, there's no mixing here. There's no no wishy-washy, no gray area. You either belong to the Lord or you don't. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. So when I see this, that those 144,000 were sent out into this world with all this tribulation and all this different stuff going on and all the, the devil doing all his activities, and when it was all said and done, guess how many came through and were standing there with the Lamb? 144,000. God ain't going to lose a single one. And he ain't going to lose a single one of us. You, if you're sealed with the Lord. Now, how do, see, in that day, um, it's funny how even the, the devil's going to copy us. The devil's going to have his own what? Seal, his own mark. Mm -hmm. But see, in that day, you, 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 it, it gives us the hint that you'd be able to see and recognize the seal. Mm -hmm. You look at the person and you can see, oh, that person knows the Lord. You could almost see the seal. And the day we live in today, 2015, you can't always just look at a person and say, oh, I see the seal. You got God's seal on you. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you can get a what? You can get a spiritual inkling. You can get a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a kind of a, you, know, you get a feel for things. But it by, by no means is how it is here. So when we see people coming and doing things and whatnot, and, and they talk about the Lord, you can say, well, that's person. You get a feeling. This person. But you also get that same feeling when they talking, saying Jesus and love and treat people good and all that stuff. And you sit there and you listen to them and you go, something ain't right here. Yes. Don't ever ignore that. Just because they're either popular or so-called, you know, powerful and got a great following. Don't ignore what God has put in you. When you, and you, something, and you go, you know, and you can't, you can't even put your hand on it. It's, it's saying the right things, you know. Who knew that Judas was who he was? He was right there with Jesus. He was doing this. They were breaking the bread when he was feeding the 5,000 and handing it out. They, he was right there with them. Jesus knew. And Jesus knows his own. So, remember, he said, many will say unto me, you know, Lord, have we not done all these wonderful works in thy name? Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Because he, if, he, if he ever knew you, he will always know you. He knows his sheep. He knows his sheep. All right. So, 144,000 having the Father's name, what? Written in their foreheads. All right. Sealed by God. And I heard a voice from heaven 
Where did this voice come from? Heaven. All right. So it's a spiritual aspect to it. As the voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder. Heard that before, right? Mm -hmm. And I heard the voice of harpers and harping with their harps. Wow, look at this. So now I hear voices, but now I also hear this music. music. And they sung, and now they're singing. As it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts. So before the throne. Who sat on the throne? God. Remember the four beasts when we first were introduced? And the four beasts were around the throne? So before the four beasts. And the elders, remember the four and twenty elders? All right. Uh, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed out of the earth. See, this 144,000 is singing a song about their experience. And the only people that can sing the song about their experience is the people that had what? Their experience. So it was only for the what? The 144,000. Which is why, like with us as men, and uh, 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 created uh, men of God, human beings. We can sing the song of redemption. That we were redeemed from a world of what? Of sin. sin. We can sing that song. And when we get to heaven, we will sing that song. But you know who can't sing that song? Angels. Angels can't sing the song that we sing. But angels can sing another song. They, they sing a song we saw when they were singing. They were singing how, how worthy is the Lamb. How great and how mighty. They can sing that song. So you can see that our experiences that we go through give us the ability to do things in heaven that others can't do. Well, why could why do we have to go through this? Don't worry about it. Going through this will be your reward. Will be your greatness. And that's why you want your rewards where? In heaven. Remember Jesus when he was talking about the Pharisees? He called them what? Hypocrites. He said they do things for... Uh, to, to be seen of men. men. And he says, and they have their what? Their reward. reward. So he said they would go before uh, men and they would, they would go into the market and they would pray with a loud voice so people can see them what? Praying. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have your reward. Well, what reward did they got? All the uh, uh, adulation and all the prestige that you got from people looking at you going, oh wow, that's a, that's a very a godly man. He's, he's praying in the marketplace. He's, he's a, that's, that's your reward. The fact that people what? honored you. But see, that's the kind of reward that who wants? The enemy. The, the, the enemy, the devil. The devil wants people to what? To worship him. Alright? And so, Jesus said that the, the Pharisees got their reward. He said because the, even when they went to go to give money, they gave money, they gave all this great big money. So people can go ooh and ah, and they, they have a parade. And, about, and Jesus said, when you give your money, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Don't try to draw attention to yourself. And then he, he, he made a thing. He said, plus, of all the people that have given, they didn't really give the most. You know who gave the most? This woman with gave just this little bit. So they're sitting here thinking, I gave the most. And no, you didn't. In God's eyes, you didn't give the most. This woman gave more than all of y'all. That so-called trying to pull out all these big bank routes. And, but but you got to make people see it. And have people, you know, uh, acknowledge. Look, you know. They had this thing, you ever hear that thing? Recognition time. Any, anybody here going to give $1,000 time to, time to, you know, uh, God has told me that somebody here is going to get $500. Who's that person? And you want to stand up and all that stuff. And it, 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 please, you know, you have your reward. But when you give, you give. You see somebody that needs, you do. You know? Because where, because if you do, because if you do the things, Jesus said, if you do these things in secret, your father will reward you openly. openly. Mm -hmm. And you want God's reward, not the reward that comes from man. You don't want the reward of people say, oh, you, you're just a great this and you're great that. You're great that lifting you up. No, 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 no. God is good. I just follow God. Any goodness that come from you or come from me, come because we follow who? God. We, got, we follow God. God be the glory. But who, who is good? God. Because uh, we are all, and, and that's the one thing that, that people often miss, that when the Jesus was talking on the Sermon on the Mount and why he gave the whole, and why God gave the, the commandments, it's not to, so we could try to keep it. 
Because we, he knew we would never be able to do what? To keep it. But it was to convince you that you are a sinner. So you would just so that you would be like you would give up on your own efforts. I can't do it. Now the minute you say that, you are on the you you ready to get saved. Because once you recognize you can't do it, you then have to go find somebody that what? That can. And there's only one person that can. And who is that? Jesus. That's Jesus. So once you find the Lord, you're on the right path. But you gotta first give up your own. A lot of people they ain't giving up. They go, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this law. I'm gonna keep this sermon on the mount. I'm gonna go live out on a mountain somewhere where I'm not gonna be tempted, because I'm gonna do it on my own strength. No, you're not, because you're born in it. You're born in it, and so you're gonna have to still be the Lord. All right. Um, but after we get saved, we then try to do what? Live every day as close to the Lord as we can. Shedding off all the filth of this world. Alright. Let's move along. And they sung and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which, which were not defiled with women. In other words, they, they were not defiled with the ways and the thinking of this world. All right, um, They didn't allow that to happen. And, and, and they were virgins. Uh, they, these are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. Just like how we do, right? Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. All right? So they're the first fruits of those uh, unto God and unto the Lamb of, 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 those, of, of a group that has been uh, taken out. Because there's still another group that's still there. What's that group that's still there? Israel. Israel. Israel's still there. All right. Now I want to emphasize a little bit here when it talks about how they were. They didn't defile themselves with women or were uh, virgins. Remember when um, the um, in the 12th chapter, it talked about there was a woman and she was given birth. We said that that woman represented, represented Israel. All right. And um, uh, there is another woman that the Bible is going to talk about. Revelation is going to talk about. It's going to talk about a, a whore, that, a whore that what, rides the beast. Mm -hmm. And that whore represents the ways and the teachings of the world because the ways and the teachings of the world are, are not. Um, are not committed to one way. Because Jesus says, I am the, I am the way. Right. Not a way, I am the way. Oh. But the whore represents religious means of trying to get to God that incorporates all kinds of ways. I'm going to take your way, this way, this way, we'll combine this way, we'll put this way with that way. There's all kind. There's a spiritual orgy of just, just, of, of, just vile ways of trying to get to God that is not the way and so it's important to keep in mind when the Bible often talks about fornication it usually has a dual or, or multiple meaning yes it definitely could mean that they were all single individuals and it could mean that but I think even more importantly was that they were committed to one philosophy and they were undefiled. And they did not allow the world's philosophy to defile them, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. And so um, they were clean and focused on, they did not allow the world to, to corrupt them. All right. So it's important to keep that in mind. I think it has that dual meaning. It certainly could mean the natural aspect of being cleansed uh, uh, sexually. But I think more importantly, it's the spiritual cleanliness. Right? And we're going to see that even again when we, as we get towards the end of this chapter. Alright. Um, verse 5. And in their mouth was found what? No God. Alright. So in other words, they told the truth. They didn't lie. They didn't mix lies. They didn't exaggerate. They didn't leave out. You know that whole aspect of telling the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. 
So, you know, when, when, sometimes when you say, did you knock over that cup? Well, no. And maybe you didn't. But maybe you bumped the table and shook the table and the table knocked and it caused the table, the shaking caused the cup to fall. So you didn't touch the cup because you could say, did you knock over that cup? I didn't touch it. Now, is that true? It's true, but you left out something. You didn't tell the whole truth. Guile is like that sometimes. See, but see, our world today is good at that. Mm. We are good at that, man. I mean, we have gotten the, the devil is good. He, he's trained people how to how to how to say things and so-called be true, but ain't true. Jesus recognized that about the devil because with the devil, he went and got the Bible. What's more true than the Word of God? Mm. And and said it is what written. 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 The devil talking about it is written. I tell you, cast ourselves down from this pinnacle of, and, and, uh, and the angels will, will bear thee up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now he's quoting something, but he ain't using the, he ain't using the scripture what? Correctly. Right? But in the 144,000, when they speak, they speak the what? The truth. There is no guile. And so that's the whole aspect. With people that today are full of guile. Well, I really care for you. And that's why we got to watch once again how, why Jesus talk about the, these, these religious leaders. And that's why there's so many people that are part of this, this, this uh, whoredom of spiritual activity. It's because they'll say, I care about you. And I care about you. And I care about you. But in reality, the real care is, I care about your money. And I care about your money. And I care about your money. And, I, and, and I'm not going to The reason why I'm spending all this time And I come out and I do all this stuff Because eventually when it's all said and done And I'm trying to give you something that may be helpful I mean, I hope I can help you in some way But the bottom line, my motivation is I'm looking for Offering time I'm looking for what? Payday And, and they don't want the payday That the Lord gives Now you say, well why are you bringing that out? Because that's something that, that is so prevalent in our society and we have to make sure now there are a lot of good people out there Amen. That, are, that, are, that are teaching the word really good and the Bible says the the, uh, uh, the laborer is worthy of his what? of his heart right. Right? and I think that's important to keep in mind but I also think that people should emphasize what the guy that wrote most of the New Testament emphasized he said yes it's worthy for me to, to do that but I won't take anything from you. I will do what first? Work. Paul was what? He was a, a tent maker. So he said, I'm going to work. And I'm going to teach. Now, when you look at it, Peter. Did Peter have a job? Peter was a what? A fisherman. While he was here on, with, with Jesus, he left his fisherman. Uh, uh, and, and, and God called him. There are those that were like Peter. But then there are also those that are like Paul. But how much of the scripture in the New Testament was written by Paul? A whole lot more. So we need a lot more people that are saying, I just want the word. I just want to teach. I just want to help. There, are, there will always be those that God said, I want, this is the only thing I want you to do. But we don't have enough people to say, I'm not doing it for the money. And not to say that Peter and any, you know, people like that do it for the money. They just, God has said that this is how you're going to be supported. But we need people that will just do it. And just, just hang in there and just say, you know, this is, this is just the way it's going to, I'm going to do it. And I'll work or whatever I got to do. I will be the tent maker. But unfortunately, that part, which is to me all through the New Testament, is not emphasized enough. And we have to make sure that, you know, as you see it, that we do talk about that. Because there are a lot of people that, that you know, you, don't, you, you, you got good word, you got good thing. But God just wants you to start talking, just share it, just give Amen. it. You'd be surprised. You just, just start talking to people. That's your ministry. Well, I got, well, before I start my ministry, I got to get me this and I got to. No, you just got to talk. You just talk and watch what God do when you just start talking to people. Amen. You don't have to have no building. You ain't got to have no... You could be standing outside on the street corner. You could be standing by the water cooler at the job. Or however, wherever. Just start doing what? Just talking. You know, I, I work 
eight hours or whatever. But I, you know, when the Lord opens up an opportunity, I do what? I talk. I share. That's ministry, and we should emphasize that. That's the to me the greater part. That's the part that has been so neglected. The people just can just go be and, and, and just minister. Share what, what God has shared with you. Right? It's important to do. You know, it's like if 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 you're trying to help a, a, a friend or family member and they you know you recognize they need you know forty, fifty, sixty dollars, you don't say, well, well, you know, before I can help you with forty, fifty, or sixty dollars, I gotta first set up my savings and loan business first. And once I get my savings and loan business, you can come out and fill an application out and I'll give you your loan. You don't have to do all that. You just do what? You reach in your pocket and you hand it to them. And a lot of times you hand it to them knowing that I may or may not what? Get it, get back. it back. And sometimes you, you, that's how you got to do with the word. I'm going to give them, I'm going to share this with them and it may or may not work with, for that person. God knows though. Amen. But you still do what? You still give it. You still share. You ain't got to set up all this elaborate stuff. Just do it. You'd be surprised how God will use and set up ministry just by the words you say. All right. All right. Six. And I saw what? Another angel fly in the midst of heaven, saying, uh, having the everlasting gospel. All right. That he saw an angel flying where? In heaven. Heaven. All right, and he's preaching the everlasting gospel unto them that dwell on the who? So the angel was in where? Heaven. Preaching the gospel to those that are where? On earth. So obviously the, the veil that separates all that has been what? It's been slide, but it's been rolled back. People in heaven, an angel in heaven is being understood and, 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 and maybe seen, it doesn't say seen, but definitely heard while they are on earth <coughs> on, on the earth and every nation how many nations every nation and kindred and tongue and people so he's preaching uh, this gospel unto them that dwell on the earth unto every nation and and every uh, uh, kindred and every tongue and people I don't think that, do we need to explain that any more? I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah. All right, so, so you, somebody said, well, I've never heard the gospel. You can't say that now. Mm -hmm. All right, seven. Saying with a loud voice, fear God. See, here's the ministry. Number one, you need to respect who God is. Mm -hmm. You don't have, a, you know, you got to have a, a respect for God. Fear God and give glory to him. Right? Worship God. Mm -hmm. You need to thank God for even having the ability to live in this world Amen. and have an option to accept Jesus. Okay. The fact that God has given you the same choice that He gave Adam right now. You got it right this second. Amen. Now you, you can choose it right now. Which one are you going to choose? The tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Which one you want? Giving you the same choice. All right? With a loud voice, fear God and give glory unto Him. For the hour of his judgment is what is come. He's like, you know, it's about to wind up. You don't have much time left. You better fear him and give glory to him now. Because his hour has come. And worship him that made heaven and earth. Why should you worship him? Because he's the one that made heaven and earth. He owns it. He's the creator of it. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth. Right. Who created the heavens and earth, Xavier? God. Always remember that. Anybody try to, you always, I don't care, I don't care how people try to, you know God made the heavens and the earth. That's a look. If you, if you can believe that, if you can accept that very first verse of the Bible, you, you're going to be all right. Amen. See, but the problem is a lot of people can't accept that. And because they can't accept that, they can't accept the other stuff that's in there. Now, well, how do we know God? Well, I can't tell you how you know. That's why you got to come to him by what? Faith. Faith. See how it all, it all connects, right? Mm -hmm. It made the heavens and the earth and the sea 
and the foundations of water. And they follow, uh, and, there, and there follow what? Another angel. Another angel came. And what did he say? Babylon is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the, of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Her fornication was what? You can take anything you want. Anyone you want. If you want to be Jehovah's Witness, if you want to be uh, uh, similes, uh, if you want to be um, a Buddhist, if you want to be, um, you know, any of these different, you know, types of false worship, you can be all these things. And then you know what? It's all good because all everybody's worshiping what the same God. That's a lie. It's not. It's not true. But that's what that's all about. That whole aspect of the of falseness. All right? We don't worship the same God. There's only one God. And there's only one way to God. That's right. And that's through Jesus Christ. Well, that seems so narrow minded. That's just that's why why do everybody gotta be so narrow minded? Well, listen, I didn't make up the rule. Jesus said the way to destruction is what? Broad. But the way to ever to, to life is what? Narrow. narrow. So yeah, I guess it is narrow minded. Jesus said the way is narrow. So you can call it what you want to. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth without any God. I ain't trying to mix it up and trying to fluff it up. It's the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. No man comes to the Father except through me. Right. So, I mean, there it is. And I think that's when the Bible says that these, these angels went forth and, and preached. I think they said stuff very much like that. You, you, you can't believe none of this other stuff that's going on. Don't believe this false prophet. Don't believe this false this, this, this antichrist. Don't believe none of the stuff they're doing. That statue that they got going around here talking and breathing fire. Don't believe it either. You better follow Jesus. Alright. Verse 9. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or on his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without measure in the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascend up for a couple days. They don't say that, do it? Forever. And then it says, and ever. And they shall have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and who receive the mark of his name. Wow. <laughs> I mean, did you, did, I mean, there's not a whole lot of commentary that needs to be put be beside that. You take the mark. Now you say, well, why is taking the mark so, so dramatic? Why is it such a, a finale? Of just you, you, you're lost. I don't know, but it very well could be when you take the mark, it changes you. It changes you in some kind of something else. I don't know, like that that image that they gave the life to, maybe changes you into something like that. I don't know what the case is. It will, you, you won't be confused about it during this time. But if you take the mark, you're done. You don't have it. And how done are you? You're done for eternity. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. And smoke uh, rises up for eternity. All right. Um, Twelve. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandment of God. And the faith of who? Jesus Christ. All right. Those that do not take the mark are those that are holding on. All right? 
they are going through with patience. You may not understand it all. You may not be able to put all the, the, the whys and the how comes together. But you are resisting and, and not receiving the, the mark of the, of, of the, of the devil. All right? and we, as we go along, we're going to see that there, there's going to be a, groups of people. There's not only are you going to have the Jewish people that God preserved, but you're also going to have these, this situation where you're going to have what's called the goats mm -hmm. and the sheep. Yes. That's right. So these are people that are making it through the tribulation, but the goats are those that you made it through. But you still lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have the sheep that you made it through. You're not lost. And you're going to go into a millennial reign. You're going to actually go into another time of, of learning and testing. Which actually the, the, the Old Testament talks quite a bit about the millennial reign. Now when we go through the millennial reign in the book of Revelation. We're just going to have just a couple of verses. Talking about the millennial reign. But. A vast number of almost the majority of the prophecies of the Old Testament prophets are about the time of the millennial reign. All right, so we'll try to bring out some of that when we get there. All right, verse thirteen, and I heard the voice from heaven saying unto me, "Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth." Yea, saith the Spirit. That they may rest from their labor, and their works do what? Follow them. Amen. Why is blessed? What did Paul say? To be to to live is what? It's Christ. But to for to die is gain. So it takes that fear out. The Bible does say, yes, death is a enemy. And an enemy is not something that you enjoy being around. Nobody enjoys being around death. But you don't have to fear it. Because once you die, you have what? You have gained. If you know who? Jesus. Jesus. Alright, it's important to keep that in mind. 14. And I look and behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud one uh, sat like on the Son of Man. Having his uh, head a golden crown. The golden crown represents what? Authority. Alright, kingship. And in his hand, a sharp sickle. All right, so he has the authority and the right to do what? To swing the sickle. Remember when Jesus gave the parable about the sower that went forth to sow, the sow uh, he sowed good seed and wild men slept. An enemy came in and sowed what? Tares amongst the wheat. And they said, should we go in and remove the tares? And he said, no, don't go in now. Because lest you might harm the, the wheat. Wheat. He goes, but at the end of the age, then shall I send my angels in, and they shall remove the tares. Well, guess what? This is it. This is it here. He's got in his hand a sharp sickle. And, a, and, and a, another angel see that? came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat in the cloud, thrust in thy sickle, and what? And reap. For the time is come for thee to reap. It's time now to bring an end to this. So we're starting to close this whole chapter of the tribulation. It's about to come to a close. Alright. For the harvest of the earth is what is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in the sickle in the earth and the earth was reaped. Look at that. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven and also having a what? A sharp sickle. And the other angel uh, came out of the altar which had the, pow had the power over fire. What are they going to do when they grab all this stuff up? All, all, all this all this tears? They're going to do what with it? Burn. They're going to burn it. And cry with a loud uh, and cry let me say that again. Cry with a loud cry unto him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. For her grapes are fully ripe. We're going to gather this up. And these vines represent these individuals that are gathering up that 
uh, are going to be thrown into this wine press. Let's take this, this, uh, the wine press of what? Of God's wrath. Let's continue to read. 19. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the, the vines of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. They are now just being squeezed by God's wrath, so to speak. And when you are squeezed by God's wrath, what happens? You can't stand before him. And when you can't stand, you're dead. So there's going to be a massive... How, whoa, what does that mean? I, well, I, I know what it means when you're dead. How they're going to die, I can't explain. But let's take a look. It, it could be a war. It could be a lot of different things. But what we see here, look at verse 20. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood came out. What's supposed to come out of, out of grapes? Grape juice. Grape juice. But this, this lets us know that this, this, this aspect of what was, what was gathered, the grapes are symbolic of what? Of people. Because what comes out when they're squeezed? Blood. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the wine press, even up, uh, uh, until the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlong. All right. So what it's saying is that so there's a lot of people, and you can read a lot of different commentaries that will tell you, you know, the six feet high for about three miles, blood running. Um, I, I, I don't know the full measure. I just know that it's a lot. Mm. You know, it's, it, you know, you see that kind of, you see that, you see that kind of, uh, just devastation that's going to take place. Yeah, it, it does sound like it's probably some kind of war that's going to go on. That God's going to allow it to happen, um, and where people are going to be killing each other. Because see, that's where. A lot of people, sometimes I think they forget how God allows. God just removes himself, and people kill each other. You know, um, well, how, why, why is God just going just, to just, just stomp on these people? Well, it's figuratively speaking. Yes, it does say he's going to stomp on people. But in how God truly does things, he just removes himself. Because what they're saying, I don't want you. But see, what we don't recognize is... The only thing that's really, truly keeping us from killing each other all the time is the presence of God. And when God just moves himself, we then return, we become savages. Now you see all these shows on the TV, you know, the, the, the Walking Dead and everything, all these different, you know, they have no, no ability to understand. It's almost, to me, symbolic of how things will be when God removes himself. You know, people just become savage. They, they, they just go after each other. All right? And so uh, that, that's kind of something that I know that happens. But how that will play out on earth when God just removes, uh, it's hard to say. So it could be a war, it could be other different things. But you always want to be in the presence of God. But if you're not in the presence of God, then you are removed. Because the Bible says that who is good but who? But God. So when God's removed, guess what also is removed? Grace. All goodness. God is full of mercy. When God is removed, what is removed? Mercy. God is full of grace. When God is removed, what is removed? Grace. God is full of love. When God is removed, what is removed? So, and, and we can go on and on with all the good attributes that God has. And when God is removed, Right, and then, and then you know, it's it's a lot of self destruction, yeah. killing each other. Right? And so, when we see this, it certainly lets us know that there's something dramatic going to happen because this certainly says it's going to be a whole lot of blood spill. Mm -hmm. But one of the ways that God knows how to allow the tares to this, to be destroyed and not the wheat is to remove God and then one tear tears up another tear. That's one way to kind of remember that. You know, because tears don't care. Tears tear. And they tear each other up apart. 
You know, that's why I always think about when I'm sitting there and I'll be uh, seeing these commercials and they be showing the, uh, the, the, you know, all these different, I don't know how many different zombie shows they got. And they just got these people, these, these, these human beings tearing up one another. Mm -hmm. and, I, and all I think about is just, these are tears. You know, and the tears were planted by who? By the devil. And they just tear up other, each other. You know, trying, if you're not a tear, I want to tear you up and t turn you into a tear. Like, you know, it's just, it's just a, a, a sad situation that we're in. But you, you, you don't want to be around when God removes his spirit, his, his, spirit, his presence. You know, because then, um, yes, you're going to end up with stuff like this. Where, you know, there's going to be a lot of blood, a blood spill. But the fact of it is, it is orchestrated by God. God says he makes a decision. Okay. You don't want me. I have now decided to remove. Because prior to that, God said, I'm going to rain on the, the just and the unjust. I'm a, when, I, when I send the rain to, 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 to water the fields and the farms, Mr. Good Guy, he's going to get the rain. Mr. Crook and Robber, he gets rain too. He gets it too. But there's going to come a time when it's not going to happen. I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take up. That's why it says, blessed are they that died in the Lord. Because he, he's going. Take him up. And now I'm going to let y'all just deal with y'all. Y'all, And then I'm going to remove myself. Now that I've removed all them, now I'm going to remove my goodness, my wonder, my, my, and let y'all go at it. And they're just going to tear each other up. That's unfortunate. And the Bible says there's going to be blood spilled. And it's going to be up to the, to the horse's bridle. For 600 furlong, and you can do you can you can put what you want to that number. Like I said, some people say it's 600 feet. I mean, six six feet by you know a certain amount of miles. You, know, you go anywhere and see six feet of blood. That's a lot of blood. You, know, you don't want to see that. All right. Ooh, I'm past my time. I, I I'm, I'm let me stop. Yeah.